When you're new to a design software like Figma, you usually have to do a lot of trial and error and watch a lot of videos to learn things like the basic shortcuts, the powerful features, the essential plugins, and the helpful techniques. And many times this process results in a lot of wasted time that could be better used to improve your skills as a designer. So in this video, I've gathered my most essential Figma workflow tricks, tricks that will make you a much faster and much more efficient designer in 10 minutes. As usual, the Figma file is linked in the description. Now let's get into it. All right, everyone, so we are inside of Figma here. Let me jump to the first point. And the first point is a concept that is pretty scary to many people, and that is auto layout. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go into like specific complex details when it comes to auto layout. I'm just gonna go through the basics of it. And I'm gonna show you why it's important to just start using the basics of it. If you wanna go into more complex details, I do have a video on it. It's linked up here. It's also linked in here in the Figma file. So for example, if we look here, we have these two different elements or layouts here. We have this avatar plus text and this avatar plus text. The difference between these is that this one is wrapped in a group and this one is wrapped in an auto layout. So why would you use an auto layout here? Well, if we use a group and we want to change the position of the text field, we can take the text field and start manipulating it like this, uh, or we could take the avatar and start changing the position like this. And well, that's fine, but when you have the auto layout, so if we go in here, when you use auto layout, you get this auto layout menu here. And that gives you a whole world of different opportunities and different things you can do to this layout. So for example, I can change the alignment here in the sidebar. I can change the orientation like this. I can change the spacing right here. Same thing if we go to this layout down here where we have a text field and a smaller text field. In a normal group like this, I can take this text field and I can change the position of it like that if I want to, maybe place it closer. But it doesn't give me the ability to change the alignment like this. It doesn't give me any of these options that just makes my life so much easier. So my tip here is to start using auto layout even in the simplest of cases. So if you have two text fields, use an auto layout, wrap them into an auto layout. If you have an avatar and a text field, wrap it into an auto layout. You will see that throughout my design files here, everything is basically made up out of auto layouts. So it is a super powerful concept. Get used to it, start using it ASAP. And that's the first point basic auto layouts. The second point is about basic shortcuts. And if you wanna dig deeper into shortcuts, I do have a video here that is also linked that you can check out. But when it comes to this tutorial, I'm just gonna go through the basics. So the first thing is creating frames. Instead of going up here to the menu, click frame to get this sidebar menu here, you can just hit A or F and then create your frame or choose here in the right sidebar. Instead of going up here to hit the text tool, just hit T, T for text or text, like I was writing there. If you want to create different shapes or common shapes, R would be a rectangle, O would be a circle. And the last one, this one is something I use a lot as well. If you wanna change the opacity of things, so let's create a circle here. If I wanna give it an opacity of 65%, I would just go to my keyboard and hit 65. And you can see here, opacity set to 65. If I wanna take 33%, 33. Super easy, much faster than going here to the sidebar to change the opacity. 
So that's basic shortcuts. Then we have basic plugins. And here, once again, I do have a video where I go more into details on different shortcuts, sorry, different plugins. Uh, and you can check it out here in the Figma file or up here somewhere. But when it comes to plugins, I think it's really three different categories that you wanna care about at first. The first one being icons. You wanna fetch icons quickly. And in the icon case, I usually use either a library called Lucid Icons or a plugin called Lucid Icons or Open Icons, which I think is a better option because it has a wide variety of different icon styles. So you could find something that looks like a retro vibe. You could find something that is very minimalistic. So Open Icon is a good option in this case. When it comes to images, I would suggest something like Unsplash or Pexels. And then when it comes to copy or copywriting, finding like placeholder text, a plugin that is called Lorem Ipsum is pretty powerful as well. And then we have number four, which is basic column grids. I do have a video where I go into all of the details of this, but if you're just starting out, I would still suggest that even if you don't know anything about column grids, I would suggest that you start using them just to get accustomed to it. And the basics are just that for desktop, you can see here in the right sidebar, we have the layout grid panel. We hit plus and we change from grid to columns. That's how we get the column grid. For desktop, we use 12 columns. That's the standard. But when we go from desktop to tablet or breakpoint one, we just change to eight columns. And when we go to mobile, we change to four columns. You could dig into the details by looking at the video above, but I think this will get you pretty far. And then the last point, which is about standardized measurements. And this is something that took me many years to get into because I was usually just doing things free flow. I would use 31 pixels here and 57 pixels here. If you find some kind of consistency in, in your designs, um, if you start using something like the four or eight point grid system, it's gonna help you a lot when you design. Now I have a video dedicated to this as well. I would have guessed. Uh, it's linked in here. I don't know if I can link any more videos up here, but if I can't, it's linked in the Figma file. Anyways, so here we have regular table or the regular span of pixel values that I would use in a common project. So four pixels divisible by four, eight pixels divisible by four and eight, 12, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, et cetera. And using this consistent pattern of, of sizing or of measurements, will help you and your developers to know in a case where you might have made a mistake, maybe you have, like I said, 31 pixels here. Then the developer, if they know that you're using the four or eight point grid system, they will know that this should probably be 32 pixels. And you yourself will also know in all cases what measurements you should use. If you want to master Figma, I would suggest that you check out this playlist. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.